I'm Rachel, owner and artist at Stella Rose Boutique here in Greenville, Tennessee. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and mash that notifications bell so you won't miss any of my future videos. Today's a special video. I hit 500 subscribers between the last video and this one, so we're having a giveaway. And all you have to do to be eligible is make sure you're subscribed to this channel, hop on over to my Facebook page, which is Stella Rose Mercantile and Boutique, and then you need to like and follow it, Take this video, share it out, comment done, and that's it. And on Sunday night, when I bring you part one of a thrift haul from Westchester, Ohio this past weekend, we'll have the drawing. And whoever wins will get to choose between a couple of different options from Iron Orchid Design Transfers. So today's video is a hodgepodge of different trash to treasures and things I needed to finish up and get done all spring and Easter related. So come with me and let's see what I got done in the garage this week. Let's go. In my last video, I tried my hand at Brianna's from Upcycled by Breeze Decor Boards and I really liked it. So I'm participating in some of the local craft fairs this spring and I am making some batch items for me to bring to the craft fairs. I had an appointment up in Morristown, Tennessee, so I stopped in at the Goodwill. I didn't really find a whole lot of stuff, but I did find these cute little bunnies, and I knew I wanted to try uh, to make them look like the cement look that uh, so many people have tried on different ceramic items. I took out my DIY letter pressed gray, which is the darker of the two grays, and I painted the bunnies. I didn't like the way the outcome was once I dried them. So I then took out the lighter gray, which is called Gravel Road by DIY. And I added some salt wash to it to thicken it up for the texture. And then I used a stenciling brush from JRV to apply it. And I added more texture by using the stippling motion with that. I then had leftover. Uh, with the gravel road and the salt wash mixture. And so I had this metal urn that I had thrifted at one of the local thrift stores and I decided to add texture to this urn with that same salt wash and gravel road mixture. And I really liked the way this turned out. I then knew once I dried them both, I wanted to add white wax to it, but I wanted to try it in two different ways. I usually always put clear wax over everything first, so I have that security blanket, but I didn't this time with the bunnies. I applied directly to it the DIY white wax, and then I wiped it back. I like how they turned out. Not bad for my first time using a salt wash mixture to make a cement look. And then I did the clear wax over the urn. I did that first and then I added the white wax to it afterwards. And I really liked the way the final outcome was after I added the white wax and I wiped it back. When I was done with both of them and I compared them, I liked the way the urn turned out better between the two, so I'm going to continue to use the clear wax as a security blanket. Here is two pieces of a bedpost that I had painted a while back and I never finished adding anything to it. So I'm finishing up this project here. You see me here. I was dancing around listening to music with Alexa in the garage as I was figuring out how I was going to stack them and make the the chunky candlesticks. Once I was done, I make up my own putty. I use this with mixing my um, tight bond and the sawdust from sanding the tops. And I fill in the holes. After they were all sanded and ready to be painted, I mixed up this beautiful color as close as I could get to the 2022 Pantone Color of the Year, and I will leave the formula in the description box below. I then sealed it with DIY Big Top, and then I made this beautiful sage green. I used 
the skeleton key and then Brianna used the liquid sunshine and I decided to try it with the darker yellow which is our queen bee and this is what I got for the color it's beautiful then I wet distressed it and sealed it up with big top you see me here marking the circles on the eggs these are the dyeable eggs from Walmart that I bought and I'm drilling a little hole in them to crack it so then I can use the scissors to help cut out the holes. And the reason why I'm cutting out these holes is because I have a spindle that is left over from a chair that I had taken apart. I'm using that as the support in the center, see? And once I've got the top hole for the egg, then I made the bottom hole so that it would slide right through. The wood here that I'm cutting the rounds out of came out of my shop. It was a salon previous to me being in there and they removed the plumbing and this was covering it up. And of course, I'm not gonna waste the wood. I absolutely can repurpose it. And this is exactly what I'm doing here. I cut the rounds out and then I sanded them down and I got that paint off the one side. Then I marked the center of each one of the rounds so I would know exactly where I wanted to put the spindle in. You see me here holding the spindle and I was holding it so that when I used my air nail gun and I went and shot it in there, I wouldn't have it go through. If I missed it, it wouldn't go through and hit my hand. So that's why I wanted my hand out of the way. I did miss it a little bit and I split the wood and I had to redo it. I tried gluing it, it didn't work. So I just went and cut another one because I have a bunch of them left over and I reattached a new one and it worked just fine. I then now have the eggs here on an additional little uh, spindle so that I could paint them. When I went to paint them in the last video, the paint didn't adhere very well, but then I found once I added a coat of DIY paint first, they worked much better by holding the Bohemian Bright colors really well. So I painted it first with a coat of beadboard by DIY, and then I painted them with these beautiful, brilliant Bohemian Bright colors from DIY. You see me here assembling the little egg risers and then once I put the top in, I glued it and then I put the nail in with the air nail gun and then I filled the tops in with the putty that I made from the sawdust and the tight bond glue. I painted the rest of the round in beadboard white and then I went and used the Bohemian Brights and I made lines all the way around the outsides of the rounds on the top and the bottom and I doodled on the eggs. I meant to record this but I was on the phone with my little brother and when we hung up I was done. So I videoed here the final result. I wasn't done tinkering in the garage yet. Earlier in the day I was looking at Pinterest and thought these bunnies were absolutely adorable, simple and adorable. So I looked around the garage and I had some leftover dog-eared picket fence pieces. So I used those and I cut them up and I cut out the outline of a bunny and then I used my bandsaw and I cut around the outline. Then I took it to my belt sander and I sanded all the edges and both the flat sides because it was rough cut. I didn't want to end up with any splinters and I didn't want anybody else to end up with splinters from it. Once I was done, I used it as my main template to make the next bunny. I then got out my milk paint and I used equal parts of warm water and I used window pane by Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. It is an off-white color. And then you see me drop in my little shaker ball in a mason jar. This works the best for me. I love it. It doesn't have any chunks in it. See the creamy consistency? Looks like a milkshake. Works beautifully every time. So I painted the bunnies both sides in window paint by Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. I did not use any extra bond in this because it was a dry raw wood. I then dried it with my heat gun and then I hit it with 220 sand grit paper 
on all the sides and all around on the edges to give it a slight distressed look. I then used my Sweet Pickens beeswax in clear and sealed them all up. This wax smells amazing. And then when I was done cutting out those rounds for those egg risers, I had a little bit more scrap wood in those pieces and I cut out egg shapes. I painted them with the leftover window pane paint that I had left over from Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. And then I decided to tap some of the making powders from DIY on them. And then I sprayed it with water to kind of see what would happen. You see how it dispersed? And then I just make sure that all of it's covered all over with the color. And this is how they dried. How neat is this? I sealed those three eggs up with the top coat from Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. And then I had some of that left over. So I added some of the New Year's Eve, which is the gold making powder from DIY into the top coat from Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. And I used that to seal up the other three eggs. And my last project for this video is I asked my daughter's mother-in-law if she would take some of the drop cloths I've given her and make some carrots for me. This idea though came from Miss Linda Purdy from Second Chance Vintage and Decor. I'm gonna link her Facebook page below. Go check her out. She is crazy creative and talented. I started painting it with Firestarter and I didn't like the way it was going on. So I decided to mix it, some Firestarter, with our decoupage medium, the crystal clear patina, and look how much easier this went on, like a dream, and it absorbed perfectly. Voila, all done. All the paint and products used in today's video, you can find on my website at stellaroseboutique.co or in my shop at 524 Justice Drive in Greenville, Tennessee. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you've hit that subscribe button and hop on over to the Facebook page and like and follow and share out the video so you can be part of the IOD giveaway on Sunday. I have started my own Stella Rose, a creative group. The only rules is that I ask you to be polite. Please share all your work. It doesn't matter who you buy from or what products you use. I just want everybody to enjoy each other's creativity. Thanks for watching. Bye.